Welcome to the Better Off Bonus Call of the Week. We're sponsored by Betterment, the largest independent online financial advisor. Now, I know we've been skipping some of the bonus calls recently because we've had these long interviews. We're going to keep interspersing them. So please, please let us know if you've got a financial question. All you have to do is send us an email. Ask Jill at betteroffpodcast.com. Ask Jill at betteroffpodcast.com. We'll arrange to get you on the air. We'll answer your questions. All right. So today we've got Chris, and he is on the line from New York City. Hey, Chris, welcome to Better Off. What can I do for you? Hey, thanks, Jill. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. Um, So my family and I, we moved to New York City about a year ago. Uh, Where we lived before, we used to own a home. We sold the house when we moved here. And we look at the real estate market, and we're trying to decide, if A, is it worth it to buy at real estate in Manhattan, we're going to stay in the city probably for 10 years, maybe 15. Mm-hmm. Uh, or doing online calculators and things, it just doesn't look quite like it pays off as an investment. So if that's the case, then what should we do with this chunk of money that we have left over from our house sale? Okay, so wait a second. You, you're you not sure whether it pays off as an investment. So I just want to back up there for a second. In New York, it's very New York City. So everyone outside of New York City is going to like find this uh, uh, conversation crazy. But it is true that oftentimes in New York, if you look at a rent versus buy calculator, and there's a really good rent versus buy calculator at the New York Times dot com. When you look at the differential, sometimes buying is really hard. So here's my question to you. You're renting right now. What is the rent that you are paying? Yeah, it's probably around. It's a lot. It's probably forty. Two fifty, forty five hundred. Okay, let's call it forty five hundred. And is that for a two or three bedroom? Uh <laughs> For, for technically, it's a one-bedroom, a convertible one. You must be living in a nice area. I won't make you tell me where. And so if you were comparing that $4,500, I mean, by the way, everyone listening right now is like, you're insane. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We, we, we feel insane. All right. So if you were going to buy something, what would you have to spend? Yeah, to, to something for something comparable like we have now, yes, I, it, I think a min, minimum, probably a million and a half dollars. Mark saying no. Mark, Mark, can you get can you get into your building for a million bucks or not? Yeah, but maybe you want to live in a specific area. Is is that what's happening? Yeah. Because you I wanted mean, like live in a fancy area? Well, no, it's not fancy. It's just that you know we have a three year old, mm-hmm. and so it's it's kind of all about the school. Mm-hmm. We wanted to go to public school, mm-hmm. and you know the the other crazy thing about living in Manhattan is just, if you want your kid to go to public school, it really helps to live in the area, yeah, in the zone of, for the school, right, and uh, and those. Those public school districts are just crazy expensive. How do you feel about moving to the suburbs? Yeah, we've talked about it. Uh, we lived in the suburbs before. We liked it, but we really like Manhattan. My work schedule is kind of crazy and erratic, so mm-hmm. uh, it's usually you know six days a week, some mornings, some nights, sometimes I'm in town, you know, for mm-hmm. all day, you mm-hmm. know, from nine a.m. to eleven p.m. So it's the commuting would be pretty brutal. All right. So it's for the near term. I have a game plan for you. You may not want to sign up for it, but I like it in my head. <laughs> but let's go. Let's do a few more things. So you've got a three-year-old in public school. How much do you and your, you said a wife or a partner? I missed it. Did you say yeah, a wife? wife? Okay. How much do you guys earn? A little over 300 Okay. And um, you have a retirement plan through work? We do. And are you maxing out? Yeah. Okay. Good. Any debt that's floating around? No, we don't have any debt. Fabulous. Okay. So how much money's in retirement savings already? Uh, probably just just a little under four fifty. Four fifty. And how old are you both? Uh, I'm forty two. My wife's thirty four. Oh, very good. Marrying someone younger. Another child, perhaps. Uh, doesn't look that way now. I think just the one. Okay, so we got two hundred seventy five grand in cash, and presumably you're going to keep renting for a while. So let me ask you something though, for reals. If you could find like a great suburban area and i'm going to tell you what i'm thinking about here is that like if you if in five years you know maybe your your professional life is settled down a little bit more um Mm -hmm. maybe it won't be i don't know but do you would you like to preserve the ability within the next say three to five years to buy something outside of the city I think so. I think we'd feel good. We would feel better if we just had the option, even if it never happens. Yeah. I mean, because I think that 
I mean, there's an inclination that you would have somebody say, give me that 275. Let's put it in the market. It's your supplemental retirement account. We're rocking and rolling. Or let's throw it all into a 529 plan and fully fund your kid's college or whatever. But I just am not a fan of that kind of of that kind of move, because I think you're going to want to preserve your options. Yeah, I think that. You know, today you feel one way about, I guess I've had this conversation with not just, you know, every single friend of mine who lives in the city and works, but (laughs) many people who um, are colleagues of mine, and that at some point, even if you feel like there's no way I'm ever going to move to the suburbs, that sometimes there's a moment where you say, you know what, commuting actually is better because I want a yard or I just want some flexibility and you might get sick of the city. Who knows? I think that what you want to do is you want to have the money invested. But I think that a chunk of that money has to be kept liquid. Um, you you already have an emergency reserve fund, right? We do. How yeah, much is do. in there? About 50. So in, in some respects, it's almost like you want to have a separate account for this 275 that is invested more conservatively than you would your uh, your retirement account of four hundred something thousand dollars, because you really want to be careful. You want to preserve the option of tapping into this money if you found a great apartment. You know, because look, things do happen. Weird stuff pops up. You might find that you're living. You're in. You're in a rental. Someone upstairs says, "Oh, my friend around the corner is going to do this," and you want. You're like, "Oh my god." I can actually buy a million and a half dollar apartment and it's a nice two bedroom apartment and it's on the Upper West Side. It's Jill's neighbor. It's fantastic. You know, like and you you, right, right. you find that you don't want to be tied up into a situation where you can't get the money to do that. Do you manage your own money right now? Right now I do. Yeah. And how's it going? You doing all right? Uh, I'm doing fine. I mean, I mean, with the way the market's gone, everybody's doing pretty well. So have you ever worked with an advisor? Uh, no, I haven't. I've looked at it. I've looked at. I've looked at Garrett, and I've uh, talked to a couple people on the phone, but I've never gone through it with it. This is a case for I know exactly who for you. I would like to make a referral to you of a fee only advisor who can kind of. And the reason why I say fee only. This is really a case where I think you need some planning work, but not necess- you don't necessarily need an investment advisor who's going to put you into a bunch of different mutual funds or index funds. I think you can do that yourself. It sounds like you're, you're astute. I think what it would be good to do is to run through an analysis of really looking at what purchasing real estate would look like for you, given your income, given your current retirement savings, and get a sense for what you could potentially afford and what's really out of the realm of possibility. It would be hard for me, at least, as an investment advisor, to invest $275,000 without running through that detailed analysis on your behalf. I think a fee-only advisor is going to work better for you because you really just want to pay someone sort of a flat fee to do the planning work. You can invest yourself, right? Mm -hmm. This is not rocket science. You 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 pick a few index funds, you'll be fine. I think that's what we're going to do. So what I'm going to ask you to do is hang on. Mark's going to get your contact information. I'm going to hook you up with someone in New York City who can help you out and run through this analysis with you. Sound good? Oh, wow, that's so great. Thanks All right. so much, Joe. My pleasure, and welcome to New York. Okay, that's a wrap of our Better Off Bonus Question of the Week. If you've got a question, it's simple. Send us an email at askjill at betteroffpodcast.com. We'll arrange to get you on. And don't forget, in just a couple of days, there's a brand new episode of the Better Off Podcast sponsored by Betterment. Talk to you then. Talk to you then.